basic medical sciences welcome right so in this video we are going to have a review on hyperprolactinemia right so before we do that let's review the anatomy and physiology of the pituitary gland right so where is the pituitary gland located is located in the hypophysial fossa which is found on the sphenoid bone right so if you look here uh, this is the sphenoid and this fossa is the hypophysial fossa and you can see the um, pituitary gland lodged here right and uh, it's usually covered like right round here on top by the diaphragm right diaphragm is is actually part of the dura mater right okay uh, let's zoom in so you can see there are two parts there is anterior pituitary gland or adenohypophysis and posterior pituitary gland or neurohypophysis. You can see it here, posterior and anterior. All right. So uh, the pituitary gland is actually connected to the uh, hypothalamus via the stalk. Right. This stalk is very important. Right. Uh, Okay, let's just review the hormones, right? So they are starting with the posterior, uh, posterior pituitary first. Uh, it's actually uh, like a neural tissue, right? It doesn't produce hormones. It only stores hormones. Which hormones? ADH, that's uh, vasopressin, and oxytocin. They are only stored here. They are actually produced by the nucleus or nuclei in the uh, hypothalamus right the supra optic and paraventricular nucleus right so there is a mnemonic to remember this you say vsop vsop right vasopressin from supra optic nucleus oxytocin from paraventricular nucleus right okay that's about the posterior pituitary anterior pituitary is actually uh is derived from the uh, Rathke's porch, right? Rathke's porch, okay, is uh, like epithelial tissue, right? So inside this, you find uh, uh, cells, cells which uh, produces hormones like growth hormone, prolactin, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, ACTH, LH, and um, FSH, right? So uh, the anterior pituitary gland is actually instructed by the cells in the hypothalamus right the hypothalamus have a releasing hormone and inhibitory hormones so uh, releasing hormones will stimulate the cells here for the production of uh, these hormones if they are high there is uh, a feedback mechanisms which will stimulate the hypothalamus again to produce inhibitory hormones which will inhibit uh, the production of uh, these hormones right okay so let's go back uh, to talk about the hyperprolactinemia right what's the etiology right so uh, about 60% um, of our uh, pituitary tumors they are actually uh, prolactinomas about 60% right so in, in etiology number one is pituitary tumors right so there are two groups we have a uh, microadenomas and macroadenomas. Microadenomas are actually uh, tumors which are less than 10 millimeters in diameter and they are found most commonly in women. Macroadenomas are actually tumors greater than 10 millimeters in diameter. 10 millimeters is also is one centimeter, right? Yeah, so it's common in men. Um, right, and uh, there is a very important concept which you need to uh to understand it's called a stock effect right and uh because uh of this stock effect there will be a uh, visual defects right so just to remember these two things okay Me mostly in men right so uh let's try to zoom in and understand what's happening here right so uh about these tumors not only craniopharyngiomas, but also uh, tumors like meningiomas, uh, dis, dis geminomas, empty cellar, and 
trauma can cause this stock effect right so here you can see um the tumor compressing the stock right so normally uh, what's happening here right so uh, in the anterior pituitary there is a specific uh, cell called a uh, lactotrope right so this lactotrope uh, is important for producing uh, prolactin right that's the hormone we are talking about right um, in the hypothalamus there is a specific nucleus called the acuate nucleus this acuate nucleus produces a hormone called prolactin inhibitory hormone or a prolactin in inhibiting hormone also known as uh, dopamine right so it's PIH, not PID. I'm sorry about that. Right. But uh, this hormone, this dopamine, it normally inhibits the lactotrope from producing uh, prolactin. Right. So prolactin or below. Th that is uh, what, what happens under normal conditions. Right. But if this tumor um, compresses the stalk or dopaminergic uh, neurons are delivering uh, dopamine into uh, the anterior pituitary where they will, where that dopamine will inhibit this cell it means the there is no inhibition prolactin will be high that's hyperprolactinemia right that's hyperprolactinemia then um i told you about visual defects it happens because uh it's very uh Cl close to the optic chiasma right it's very close to the optic chiasma okay so let me show you um the visual pathway right so it's located here on two right so the kind of visual impairment is called a uh, bitemporal hemianopsia right bitemporal hemianopsia that that's what usually happens in this case now let's look at other causes of hyperprolactinemia decreased inhibitor action of dopamine right so uh here uh we are talking about drugs right drugs uh that decrease dopamine synthesis uh, for example phenothiazines metoclopramide right so these are actually dopamine antagonists right so they can contribute to uh, hyperprolactinemia next drugs uh, which deplete dopamine right dopamine depleting agents like alpha methyl dopa or recepin other drugs include uh, tricyclic antidepressants narcotics cocaine um, ssris uh, calcium channel blockers like verapamil ranitidine is an h2 blocker so this can also uh, cause increase in prolactin right so this list is not exhaustive right there are a lot of other drugs which causes increase in prolactin the next cause are the stimuli that overcome the action of dopamine or the action of prolactin inhibitor hormone an example of this uh, is actually primary hypothyroidism right resulting in an increase in a uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone and that will subsequently cause an increase in uh, prolactin release so you should always check the level of tsh in patients with elevated prolactin right there are other conditions which causes uh, increase in prolactin right so normal physiological conditions like uh, pregnancy illness uh, hypoglycemia seizures exercise stress sleep liver cirrhosis uh, nipple stimulation uh, chronic renal failure uh, like cr uh, crying baby or even uh, sexual orgasm can also increase uh, prolactin now let's look at clinical presentation right firstly menstrual abnormalities like amenorrhea or oligomenorrhea right so the amenorrhea appears to be caused by inhibition of hypothalamic release of gonadotropin releasing hormone with a decrease in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone secretion 
Prolactin inhibits the LH surge that causes ovulation. Therefore, there won't be any ovulation in a person with hyperprolactinemia. You should also remember that uh, the cells which produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormones are just suppressed. They are not destroyed. Other conditions include uh, infertility, gynecomastia, uh, osteopenia and osteoporosis can also occur in long-standing cases. What about in men? Men usually present with hypogonadism, erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, gynecomastia, infertility. In men, uh, there is no uh, galactoria, right? So did I mention it here? No, I didn't. Galactoria very important is there right but in men no galactoria right okay cool uh, let's look at diagnosis right so the first thing if a patient is presenting uh, with these symptoms firstly you need to rule out these uh, physiological conditions where prolactin will be high like pregnancy uh, etc right and drugs pregnancy and drugs those are the most important uh, factors right after ruling out those ones then we will talk about other things for example uh, most prolactinomas may co-secrete growth hormone right so they might be a growth hormone right so if you test uh, prolactin uh, greater than 100 nanograms per meal suggest probable pituitary adenoma Prolactin level should be commensurate with tumor size. For example, uh, prolactin uh, about 100 nanograms per mil correlates with a tumor of approximately 1 centimeter in diameter. Prolactin of 200 nanograms per mil correlates with tumors of approximately 2 centimeters in diameter right there is another random test right it's called a basal fasting morning prl right so if this uh, prolactin is uh, greater than uh, 100 to 200 milligrams per liter in a non-pregnant woman this is an indication for a pituitary mri right so normally this value is uh, less than 20 milligrams per liter right okay that's all about diagnosis treatment or management firstly uh, uh therapeutic so we we need a dopamine agonist like uh carbigolin or bromocryptin right so these are uh, mostly used uh dopamine agonist right but if a patient is presenting with galactoria number one drug is Carbegolin, right? That's the answer, right? Surgery is used if the tumor is not responsive to uh, carbegolin or bromocryptin, or we can indicate surgery if there is significant compressive neurological defects. Surgery is effective for microadenomas than macroadenomas because only 30% of macroadenomas can be successfully resected with a long-term recurrence of more than 50%. Radiation therapy can be used if the drug therapy and surgery are ineffective at reducing the size of tumor and the level of prolactin. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe so that you won't miss any of our latest videos. Until next time.